Is eating fish healthy? Certainly not for the fish, and most definitely not for the oceans. That's the reason the Sarno brothers, founding chefs at Good Catch Foods, began perfecting 100% plant-based seafood. They wanted sustainable options that are respectful of all creatures and don't harm our oceans. Ask your grocer for Good Catch Foods like tuna and crab cakes, or shop online at goodcatchfoods.com. Then, host your own Fishless Friday and feel good about every bite. Rogue Nicotine On Demand, delivered direct to your door. Available in all your favorite flavors and formats. Pouches, gum, wintergreen, peppermint, and more. From your Monday morning coffee to watching hoops to dinner at the in-laws, Rogue Nicotine is there for you when you need it. Visit roguenicotine.com today and save 10% when you place your order for sugar-free, fast-acting Rogue Nicotine. Underage sales prohibited. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit roguenicotine.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 261. Virginia Roberts directly implicated several people in her statements and her sworn deposition in court. And one of those people who does not get enough publicity, who does not get talked about nearly enough in the media, is Senator, well, ex-Senator, George Mitchell. George Mitchell was the Senate Majority Leader for six years, from 89 until 1995. And he is implicated and being directly involved in the abuse of at least one of Jeffrey Epstein's trafficking survivors. And this is not talked about more. This isn't brought up more in the legacy media. Don't you think that this is a story that deserves some attention, that des- that, that deserves some resources from these big outlets? You would think... A story involving politicians at such a high level would have them clamoring all over themselves to get the scoop. Especially considering the environment that we have seen for the past 8-10 years in America. But yet, the legacy media is silent. All of the big time... Ivory Tower living so-called news people you see on TV, they're silent, and the band plays on. Well, here on the Jeffrey Epstein Show, we're going to continue to do our small little part to bring the truth and the facts directly to the people, because the legacy media is way too busy playing tribalistic games. This is a very high-profile man. This is a man who has tasted the very top at the levels of power. And he is being directly implicated in abusing a girl being trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein, who, mind you, George Mitchell is on record stating is a very good friend of his. You would think that there would be a frenzy in the media to get this scoop, huh? You would think that they would be falling all over themselves to break this story. But here we are. So it is up to independent media. It is up to content creators and independent journalists. And most importantly, it is up to everybody out there listening to this podcast and following this case to make sure that you're informing your friends. Make sure that you don't leave people like George Mitchell out of this case. Because it's crucial and it's important that people that are directly implicated in the abuse of Virginia and others, it's crucial that they are questioned and that they come forward either of their own will or they must be subpoenaed and brought before investigators because these aren't allegations that are something you can ignore. This isn't somebody saying, well, uh, you know, this guy was being mean to me and he said some harsh words. No, this isn't that. 
These are very serious allegations made from a very credible witness. And they're leveled at some of the most powerful people in the world, folks. We're talking about the ex-Senate majority leader. This is a man that would be in line for the presidency when he was in office, if something would have happened to the president and vice president, etc. And he is directly implicated in abusing Virginia Roberts and the media isn't asking harder questions. It's an absolute joke, folks. In fact, it's such a joke that I had to go back to 2019 to pull a decent article for us to cover tonight. So let's do that. Let's jump into this article and see what the, uh, the guys from the Banger Daily News have to say. The headline of this article, Maine's George Mitchell denies role in alleged Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking ring. The author is Michael Shepard. And this article was published on August 9th of 2019. A woman who alleges financier, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein trafficked her for sex as a girl, said former U.S. Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell of Maine was one of the men she was asked to visit as part of that trafficking ring, according to court documents unsealed Friday. Now remember, this is in 2000 and. 19. So this was from the first treasure trove of documents that came out directly before Epstein's quote-unquote suicide. And in these documents, it wasn't just George Mitchell as far as politicians named. We also know that Bill Richardson was directly implicated as well. And that's another guy that we've talked about here on the podcast uh, pretty in-depth because it's a uh, an important part of the story. He plays a big role, a significant role. And again, when people that are in, in powerful positions such as George Mitchell and Bill Richardson are being directly implicated, you would think that the coverage would be wall-to-wall 24 hours a day. Mitchell, 85, denied the allegations in a Friday statement calling them false and saying he never met the woman, Virginia Roberts, and never observed or suspected any inappropriate conduct with underage girls during his time as a friend of Epstein. Mitchell has not been charged with a crime or sued over the allegations. Well, he should be charged with stupidity, first of all, for hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. Again, how many times do we have to say it here on the podcast? Anybody who was an intimate friend of Jeffrey Epstein's, who had access to his homes, who was around him all the time, knew that this man was a bit off. They understood that this man had some proclivities that were not normal. And yet they all continued to hang out with him. They all continued to, ha- to, to go to his events, to show up at his parties in hopes that him and his influence and, of course, his money could provide them with a little bit more because these people at their core are greedy and it's always about a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more power, a little bit more status, a little bit more information. It's always about something with these people and they always have an ulterior motive. The episode links one of the most prominent politicians in Maine history to a scandal that has cast suspicion on powerful men who have counted Epstein as a friend, including President Donald Trump, former President Bill Clinton, and Prince Andrew, the son of Queen Elizabeth II. So, again, you would think with all of the attention that has been tossed on Donald Trump, with all of the attention on Prince Andrew, you would think that somebody like George Mitchell would garner at least some interest, would at least have some of these outlets sending reporters or investigative journalists to tack down this story. But no, no articles, very few new articles that even mention George Mitchell, even though these claims have been in the public sphere for years now. So remember... When the legacy media eventually does 
decide to turn their attention towards George Mitchell and Bill Richardson and they try and act like they're coming out and they're these big uh, proponents of the survivors and they, they've been, you know, they've cared the whole entire time. Just remember that they've had all these years to write articles about George Mitchell. They've had all these years to track him down, to get him on record, and none of them have bothered to do so. Just remember that when they're trying to gaslight you. Mitchell, a Democrat and Waterville Waterville native who served in the U.S. Senate from 1980 to 1995, is best known nationally for his stint as a U.S. peace envoy to Northern Ireland and the Middle East, as well as his 2007 investigation of steroid use in professional baseball. And I remember when that whole entire thing was going on, it was laughable at best. I mean, that's what Congress was doing. That's what the Senate was doing. They were busy investigating steroids in baseball after an illegal war was going on in Iraq. This is what they were doing. Instead of treating people like war criminals, they were worried about steroids in baseball. These are our leaders, folks. And we continue to send the same knuckleheads back to D.C., Every single election cycle as if we have not learned our lesson the first time. Epstein had a documented friendship with Mitchell dating back to the early 2000s. In a 2003 New York Magazine profile, Epstein was paraphrased as saying Mitchell was the world's greatest negotiator. And Mitchell called Epstein a friend and a supporter. But of course he distanced himself from that, right? Oh, he was a friend and a supporter, but not anymore. Not anymore. No, we're not friends anymore. Now that it, now that everybody knows what he is and not just me, well, I, I can't be friends with him anymore. And that's what they do. It's just like the, the intelligence agencies that run these sort of assets. When, when the assets outlive their use, they're burned. Either they're given up, given into the wind and their fate is left up to whatever authorities uh, have them in custody or more sinister things occur. But it's the same thing in so-called polite society, meaning, oh, you're accused of this and we were great friends. Well, I'll just go into my PR mode and I'll try and swindle my way out of our relationship by saying we really weren't that close. In reality, everybody knows differently, though, and especially in this case where there is so much, so much interest at this point and the microscope is turned to every little detail. People like George Mitchell, they better have a better alibi than this because guess what? The wheel is going to spin and eventually the arrow is going to fall directly on his name and there is going to be... A whole lot of questions that he's going to need to answer. Epstein was arrested in July on federal sex trafficking charges that date back to the early 2000s. He had been under scrutiny since a November 2018 report in the Miami Herald examining a 2008 plea deal on state prostitution charges that allowed him to avoid federal prosecution. The documents mentioning Mitchell were unsealed Friday in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in a civil lawsuit brought by Roberts, who alleges she was underage when Epstein trafficked her for erotic massages and sex against Ghislaine Maxwell, a British socialite, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, and one-time partner of Epstein, who Roberts said recruited her for the ring. And again... When it comes to Ghislaine Maxwell and these documents coming out, I th- she has to be really beating herself up over this whole defamation situation. If she would have just kept her stupid mouth shut, if she would have just done what all great criminals know how to do, and that is to keep your mouth shut, she would not be facing any of this, and neither would any of her friends. So when all was said and done... And all the horses returned to the stable. Ghislaine Maxwell was not as slick as she thought she was after all. Roberts mentioned Mitchell as part of one of several depositions submitted as evidence in the 2015 lawsuit. 
In 2016, she was asked by a lawyer to name politically connected and financially powerful people with whom she was told to have sex. Roberts responded by saying she was instructed to go to Mitchell, former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, and others. She also alleged Epstein and Maxwell used the word massages as a synonym for sex and said of Epstein and Maxwell that their whole lives revolved around sex. And we know that massage was code word in the Epstein orbit for sex. And we also know that our good friend here on the podcast, one of our favorite people in the whole world, good old Dirty Dershowitz, has admitted to having a quote-unquote massage at Jeffrey Epstein's. Mitchell is named in another newly unsealed deposition in the case by a man who said only that he had seen the former senator while working for Epstein. He makes no further reference to Mitchell and defends another man named by Roberts. He said Epstein often offered house guests massages from his workers. And I don't even understand what that means. Who shows up at their friend's house and decides they're going to drop down to their skivvies hop onto a table in whatever room it may be and get massaged by some random girl that just happens to be camped out at their, at this guy's house. That's not normal behavior. And it's no, and if it's normal behavior for them, well, that's because they're all fellow travelers and they're all sick degenerates. I know if I walked into my friend's house and he had a bunch of girls lined up and was like, Oh yeah, we're getting massages, dude. First of all, the answer would be no. Second of all, I'd ask him what the hell kind of drugs he was on. And third, I'd leave. Who goes to their so-called business associate's house for a massage? These are rich-ass dudes, okay? I'm talking more money than they'll ever be able to spend. They could have the top masseuses in the world come and work on them. The same people that work on these athletes, etc., etc. But instead, they chose girls from Eastern Europe, etc., etc., that were obviously being trafficked here by Jean-Luc Brunel through MC2 for Jeffrey Epstein and his sick friends like George Mitchell and Alan Dershowitz to abuse. That's obviously what was going on here, in my opinion, okay? The unsealing of the court documents was previewed last month by Vanity Fair, which linked Mitchell to them and included a statement from him denying the allegations. Mitchell did not answer a call to his cell phone on Friday, but he issued a new statement to media outlets after hundreds of pages of documents were released. Richardson... Prince Andrew, and several others named by Roberts have also denied the allegations. The allegation contained in the released documents is false, Mitchell said. I have never met, spoken with, or had any contact with Miss Roberts. You know, okay, so your canned, stupid-ass denial is expected, right? That's, we expect that at this point. But if you're truly innocent and you truly didn't do anything, Well, why don't you go under oath and say so? Why don't you voluntarily call the FBI, go up there, get under oath, and tell them everything you knew about Jeffrey Epstein, everything you know about Jeffrey Epstein, and go under oath about what Virginia alleges occurred. Because she went under oath. She, This is a court deposition, my friends. She wasn't sitting around at the ice cream shop with a couple of her friends just piping off. These are receipts. And scuzzballs like George Mitchell, well, they don't have anything to help prove their evidence, right? All they have is their name, their power, and their friends in the legacy media. Well, the time for these people to be protected, the time for them to be able to avoid these sort of allegations is over. The legacy media has completely been bypassed and the new age media, independent content creators, etc., have picked up the mantle and have done the hard work, have done the legwork, have put all of the pieces together. And that's why all of these predators are now in panic mode. And why the year 2020 is the year that the predators turned into the prey. 
If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links to this article are in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back tomorrow and we'll do it all over again. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover, all for just three bucks plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 1331 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 1331. Enjoy! Social justice. It's the effect of systemic progress. It's not about this moment. It's about every moment. It's not about immediate change. It's about constant momentum. Saybrook University has been doing the work since 1971 educating inquisitive, informed, and inspired leaders to change the world for the better. Learn more at saybrook.edu.